Hello and welcome to this Type of 3 screencast. This episode is all about translating Type of 3's backend, and I want to show you just how easy it is to translate Type of 3's backend into your given language using Crowdin. To begin, we will look at how you can enable different languages in Type of 3's backend, then how we can test our translations locally using the local instance of Type of 3. And to finish off, we will look at how to use Crowdin to submit and manage our translations so that they can be used and shared with everyone in the Type of 3 community. To begin with, I need to enable my chosen language in Type of 3's backend. To do this, head over to the Admin Tools module and select Maintenance, followed by Manage Language Packs. Next, I select Add Language and find my alternative language in the list. I now need to download my language pack before I can start using it. And now let's enable my new backend language for my user record. And almost immediately, the backend language has now changed. But as you can probably tell, not everything has been translated. And that leads us nicely onto our main purpose of this video, which is all about using Crowdin to manage translations in Type of 3's backend. Crowdin is a cloud based localization management platform designed to facilitate the translation of localization of software, websites, apps, and other digital content. Crowdin is free for open source projects like Typo3. So as we've already discovered, there are several parts of Typo3's backend that haven't been translated into our chosen language. And what I want to do next is log into Crowdin with my account and start adding translations for Typo3's backend for my chosen language. After registering and logging into my account, the first thing I need to do is find the Typo3 project itself. And we've got some information about the localization team itself on the right hand side, and also the current translation state of each of Type of 3's backend language packs. And as of right now, only 32% of Type of 3's backend has been translated into my chosen language. So before we begin translating the backend, let's talk a little bit about where our translations files sit in our Type of 3 installation, and also discuss how we can test our changes locally before submitting them to Crowdin. Let's head back to our Type of 3 installation. Now the backend itself is comprised entirely of system extensions. The dashboard itself is a system extension, just like the backend user module we used a moment ago. And each of these system extensions relies on labels, so that they can be translated into multiple languages. Now if you look at my installation, we can see the dashboard label itself hasn't been translated, and none of the labels within the dashboard module have been translated either. So let's start by getting the title on the left hand side translated. To do this, I'm going to add the translations locally just to test how they work before adding the actual translations into Crowdin. So I'm in my IDE and I've got a local instance of Type of 3 running in composer mode. And I want to find the dashboard system extension. And from here, I'm looking in the vendor Type of 3 CMS dashboard directory. Note that all system extensions have the CMS prefix. And then we're going into resources, private, and the language directory. System extensions and community extensions will contain a number of different translation files within them. In this example, my system extension has three translation files. However, it can vary depending on the system extension you're working with. So I know the third translation is for the title we see in the page module, and the first two translations are seen elsewhere in the back end. Let's go ahead and update all three. Clear the cache. And we can see that the label for dashboard has been updated in the sidebar. Let's make one more change locally before submitting our actual changes in Crowdin. This time, I'm going to translate a label found within user settings. And it's a string of text that gives the user the option to receive an email every time someone logs in using their account. So, to update this, I'm going to search for the string of text using my IDE. And as you can see, our translation can be found in the local lang XLF file in the CMS setup system extension. So, Let's go ahead and change that and test it locally.
and our label's been updated. So we've tested our translations locally, and we know exactly which files we need to update. So we now need to head back to Crowdin and start submitting our changes. So we have two small translations we want to make. We've tested them locally, and we know which files we need to update in Typo 3's core. Heading back over to Crowdin, I'm going to search for the Typo 3 project again, and then search for my chosen language. By default, we're always going to work with the main branch for Typo 3. If you have a specific translation you'd like to provide for an older version of Typo 3, you can select the respective branch. But otherwise, by default, we will always use main. And for the first example, we're looking for the dashboard system extension. Translation files for any extension, be it a system extension or a third party extension, will always be found in the resources private language directory. And in this example, we will be changing the local lang underscore mod.xlf file. So we are now editing our local lang underscore mod.xlf file in Crowdin, and the platform is asking us to provide translations for three of our labels. And I'm just going to go ahead and provide Crowdin with translations for each of the three labels. It's also worth noting that when you provide Crowdin with a translation for a specific word, Crowdin will remember that word, and if you're editing a separate file somewhere else and the same word pops up, Crowdin will recommend that translation again. So we've added our translations for the dashboard system extension. And next I'm going to search for the CMS setup system extension so that we can add our translation for the email notification label. And again, I'm going to find the label I want to translate and provide Crowdin with the appropriate translation. As you can probably tell, this file contains a lot more labels. Whilst we've saved our changes in Crowdin, they still need to be approved by submitting the localization team. In total, there are three steps required to get your changes approved and published in Crowdin. To begin, we submit our proposed translations, which we did a moment ago. Then, somebody in the localization team will either approve or reject our changes, and the approval process itself usually takes place within 24 hours. Also note that during the approval process, the localization team will not be checking the quality of your translations. Their role is purely to stop people abusing the system. And finally, an export task takes place every two hours. This task identifies any new changes that have been submitted in Crowdin. These changes are then taken and added to the respective language packs, ready for us to download in our Typo 3 backend. Don't forget, if you're having any issues or have any questions related to the approval process, you can contact the localization team using localization at typo3.org. So my changes have been approved by the localization team, and I now need to update my language pack so I can see my changes in the back end. So we're going back into admin tools, maintenance, manage language packs. And as you can see, the last updated timestamp has been updated, which means there's a new version of our language pack ready for us to download. So let's switch back over to our chosen language and see if the changes we submitted in Crowdin are now visible in the back end. And the dashboard title has been changed on the left hand side. And if we go back into the user settings page, we can see that the string of text which we also translated is now visible in our chosen language. And that's it for today's video. If you'd like to find out more information about how you can contribute changes in your chosen language using Crowdin, or if you want to find out more information about the localization team themselves and the great work they're doing, head over to the community page on typo3.org. You can also reach the localization team on their Slack channel found on typo3 Slack.